What's up guys, so I'm here in beautiful Montana and I've not done a Q&A video in a long time so I reached out to you guys on Twitter and also on Instagram so you guys can ask me some questions. Now this video is being sponsored by Webroot but let's go ahead and begin. First question is from Morats00 and this is from Instagram. Canon EOS R or Nikon Z6? So if the Nikon Z6 had a flip out display, I would definitely pick the Nikon Z6, mainly because I feel that the Nikon Z6 has almost all of the features that the Canon EOS R has. I mean, the color science is really great. Autofocus also works fantastic. Battery life is outstanding. It's a workhorse. You can get 10 bit and also soon get raw, which I think just kind of gives it the edge over the EOS R. This next question is also from Instagram, and I'm sorry if I'm saying this incorrectly. It's Shaikh, AA Alam313. He's asking, What camera am I currently using? Right now, we are using the brand new Sony A6600, which I think is a great camera. Actually, you guys tell me how this frame looks, and also check out this B roll. I mean, I think it looks beautiful. I will be doing a full review on the A6600, but as my main camera, I usually use the C200 and also the USR and also the Black Magic. I'm just using a lot of cameras, but seriously, currently A6600. Stay tuned, make sure to subscribe so you guys don't miss out on that review. This next question comes from Twitter and it's from Marquez Brownlee. Would you rather make a feature length film in 240p or eight frames per second? So I feel that with today's technology, if we take 240p and upscale that to 4K, I think it's definitely digestible, but I don't know. I don't feel that with eight frames per second, if somebody had to sit there and watch it for like an hour or two, I don't think it would be something that I would wanna do. However, I know that people have done some creative stuff with eight frames per second. In fact, the new film from Aladdin, they shot some stuff at eight frames per second and they kind of sped it up and it looked pretty good. But uh, yeah, if I had to pick one, definitely 240p. Now before I answer the next question, I do wanna thank Webroot for sponsoring today's video. If you guys have not heard of Webroot, I talked about them in the past. They have an awesome VPN service. Consider it like Wi-Fi security. You can install this on multiple devices. So if you have an iPhone, an Android phone, a computer, you can have it running on up to five devices at the same time. But the best part is you can download this on unlimited amount of devices and you activate them as needed. What I really like about Webroot is that they're actually protecting your information and they keep no logs at all. If you guys are interested in learning more about Webroot, check out the link down below in the description. This next question comes from Twitter and it's from at the Surge Media. Body and a decent lens under $1,500 that can support 120 frames per second. Without a doubt, I would say Fuji X-T3. That camera is awesome. We actually use it in our production. We shoot a lot of B-roll with it. And you can also do 60 frames per second in 4K. And it also has like this film simulation that you can use called Eterna, which is very popular. Look into that camera. Even the kit lens, fantastic. This next question is coming from Twitter and it's from at Josh Haynes. Favorite light you've used in 2019? So I've talked about this light before. It's the Bowling P1. It's a little portable light that you can literally fit in your pocket. Battery life is outstanding. It's also RGB. It's not too crazy expensive. It's about like $150. I made a video on it already. I'll leave it linked down below or annotate it up above. In fact, I've actually brought it with me on this trip. I mean, it literally comes with me everywhere I go. And I know it's a little small portable light, but I think it really can save you in a pinch. This one's coming from Instagram and it's from Josiah GVS. Do you think the Pocket 6K is worth double the money versus the 4K? So I have both of them and I can generally say I would rather pay the extra money for the 6K mainly because if you're using the 4K version, at least for me, if you're gonna be using Canon glass, you'll have to buy a speed booster, which is gonna set you back, you know, around close to $600. Also, when you're using an adapter, there's just one more thing that can fail on the camera. So overall, as a package, I feel the 6K is the way to go. And of course, the resolution, that reframing is just amazing. So in my opinion, definitely the 6K. This next question is coming from Instagram and it's from Veep Fukas. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. Your first camera and what age did I start? So I don't remember the exact name of the first camera. I think it was from Sony, but it didn't really matter because all we cared about was creating content. It was VHS, it was very rough times, but we had a lot of fun. I actually did a video on that. If you guys are interested in watching it, there will be an annotation up above. Make sure to check that out. But if you guys have any questions that I did not answer, leave me a comment down below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and if you guys want to see more q a's also let me know thanks again for watching you guys will catch me in the next one adios